for the morning church. We want to give God thanks and praise this morning for bringing us out yet another Sunday morning. This one is a very cool and a little bit wet, but cool and cool side this morning. So we want to give God thanks for that and um, for taking us through a week so that we could be back here together in fellowship. Together again and to fellowship one with another. This morning, oh Lord, we pray for all those who are worshiping that you will fill their hearts with faith and love and hope and thankfulness that we could worship together again. For those who are not able to worship in person, we pray, oh Lord, that they will find comfort in your word. This morning, God, we pray for those who are sick. Those who are homeless, those who are helpless, those who are challenged physically and mentally, those who have lost their job and are in need of employment. We pray for those who are lonely, those who are hopeless. We pray for the families of those who are left behind, who are hurting and in need of comfort. We pray, oh Lord, that they will know that they can trust in you, that they can depend on you. We pray that their hearts will be turned to you, and we pray that you will find comfort in knowing that you are there for them. We ask, Lord, that as we continue with our service, that our hearts will be blessed by the singing of songs and by hearing your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Sister leading us this morning in prayer, and it's just the prayers for leading the worship service. We want to welcome you, those of you in the building this morning. It's good to see you, and it is good to be in the house of the Lord. We want to welcome those who are listening on the electronic medium. We are happy that we are able to extend to you the service that is here, and keeping in mind we can only be here for one hour, but we going to use this hour, as you have heard already, the Spirit of God will lift us up, and I pray that that is your experience this morning as we worship. Lift me up 
and I heard behind me the voice of a big earthquake. Blessed be the word, blessed be the word of the Lord from its face. It was the sound of the wings of the living creatures as they touched one another, and the sound of the wings beside them, and the sound of a great earthquake. The Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. The hand of the Lord being strong upon me. And I came to the exiles at Kalabi, who were born by the children of Tana, and sat where they were born. And I sat there over one of them seven days. At the end of the seven days, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. Verse 18. If I say to the wicked, you shall show that, and you give him no warning, nor speak to one of the wicked from his wicked way, in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity, but his blood will be required at your hand. This is the word of the Lord. May the Lord have his blessings to us through the reading of his soul words. And so this morning, I want us to go back to the scripture that was read by Brother Father uh, just a while ago. And I know that this is the love month. And uh, it's the first time I'm using that phrase here. And last week we didn't say anything about uh, Happy Valentine. But that was for a purpose. And it is now, this morning, I'm saying Happy Valentine to you and to all of what you're listening in. And I noticed and I observed that you were well dressed. Uh, you had a little basket that you passed out to others. And I know you have a little bit meal for last week. Well, you can continue this week because you don't have to stop it at all. But this morning I want to speak to you on the topic for the love of God. And so we continue the same thing, only that we will now shift that focus to the love of God. I just want to read verse 18 of Ezekiel uh, chapter 3 and verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt die, and thou give him not the warning, nor speak to him, or to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will be at your hands. And we pray that God has us blessed to the reading of his word. So now let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the love that you have demonstrated to us. A love that will draw us unto yourself. And I pray this morning that as we come to worship you, that we will in response to the love that you have shed abroad for us, will now serve you. And God, that we will take your word to those who are without Christ. And Father, that we will let them see the love of God and that they will come to him. And I pray God that as your church, that you will help us to bind ourselves together in the love of God, for your word will tell us that by our love, they will know that we belong to you. And so God, I pray that you will bless us this morning as we worship in Jesus' name. Amen. For the love of God, we spend a lot on each other, and that is perfectly well and good. And by the way, when you say you love someone, you do two things for the people or that one that you love. You obey on the one hand and you serve on the other hand. 
this morning then, I want us to transform that love expression from one another unto God and to do the same thing uh, with the Lord. Because we love Him, we will obey Him and we will serve Him and understand that the love that we share comes directly from the heart of God and it is called that agape love and that God demonstrated that love towards us that while we were yet sinners and those who were still sinners God loved us and he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us and so this morning I want us to look at what our expression of love to God would look like as we would focus on loving Him. Number one, for the love of God, I'm calling on you this morning to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross because He loved us. And we died on the cross because of His love. He wants to deliver us from our sins and bring us into a personal relationship with Him that we would be able to live for Him and uh, at the end of this life we would be with Him for all eternity. So Jesus Himself called us to repent of our sins. Now repentance means that that which you are involved in that you will turn around. It is a turning around of the life that you are living. And because you are now responding to God, God will then say to you that I do not want you to go back to that life of sin. I remember the conversion of a, of a drunkard and um, he was one who always turned back to that. When he got converted, he said to the pastor, I took the liquor bottle down to the sea and I threw it in the sea and I put a sign, no fishing. That is what it's like. You turn away from your sin and you don't look back. You go forward. But as you turn your life from that life of sin, it is that you, you give your life to the Savior that Jesus Christ becomes now your Savior and your Lord. So now, your life is not what I want to do, but it is what Jesus will have us to do. And so we go to the Word of God, and we study the Word, and we look at the life of Jesus in the Word, and we imitate that, we take that life, and we follow Him. And now is that we, as we give our life to Christ, it is not what I would want to do, but it is what God would have me to do. When you look at the passage here that was read, it says that if you want to warn that man of his sin, his blood is that on you. But if he doesn't repent of his sin, his blood will be on him. And as I have to understand the scripture, it means then that if you would not repent of your sins and turn to Christ and you die in your sins, you will die and you will go to hell and endless separation from God. So for the love of God this morning, and I know you would say that this is my life and I do whatever I want with it and God will not argue with you. But God is pleading with you this morning to surrender that life to Him. Secondly, for the love of God, I'm challenging you to be a soul winner for God. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and verse 30, tells us that he that winneth soul is wise. Why is that? Well, when we look at the text that is before us, the Lord said to Ezekiel, I am appointing you as a watchman to the children of Israel. And that command meant that he would go there and share with them the word of God and 
and appealed to them to give their life to him. That was the command of God. And because you and I have given our life to Christ, our expression of love to him is that we will be a sole winner for the Lord. That we will get out there in the highways and the byways and we will share the word of God with those who are uh, yet in their sins. And as we do that, the Spirit of God will draw those out of Him. And so, Proverbs tells us, and it's a beautiful verse, you want to digest this verse as you look at it. It says that the, the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. And he that wins souls is wise. I look at the first part of that verse. Because you and I, who are now a child of God, the righteousness of God in us, and we are living that life of righteousness. And it is saying here that the truth of our righteousness is a tree of life. Think about that for a moment, church. That as you and I engage in the ministry of soul winning, and we see lost people coming to Christ, and God will to add those people to the uh, fruit of our lives, that as we go on through this life, imagine what our life would look like for those who we have led to the Lord will not identify us as the one who have shared Christ and our our, our, our spiritual life would be one of, of, of a very fruitful one because we have led others to Christ. But it went on to say that as we engage in that, it is that uh, it is wise because it is wise to do and lead people to Christ. This is what James said. Uh, James said that uh, if you lack wisdom, then you ask God for wisdom. Now, if you put it together, then, all right, we don't know how to lead others to Christ. But we go and we ask God how to do it. God will give us that understanding as to how we can um, uh, lead others to Christ because it is wise if we lead and when we lead others to Christ. And so, as we engage in that ministry, then, the wisdom of God will now be a part of our lives. And as I look at the first part of the verse, that those people that you would have led to Christ would look to you and would come to you and would draw from you questions and understanding that they need so that they would be able to go on with their lives and they will look at you as that person that is wise. And it is that now the, the wisdom of God will be shining out of your life and onto the people that is around you that will cause them to look to you. He that wins soul is wise. But also as we look at this here, the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 3, again listen to this verse. That and that uh, sorry, let me read again. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars are uh, forever and ever. Daniel describes what a soul winner is like. That as he leads others to Christ, his life would be that as the sunshine and the moon. And then those that he would lead into righteousness would be like a star. Look at how he is describing a soul winner. And therefore, as we engage in that, uh, it is that we are, uh, are wise in becoming a soul winner. A righteous person affects the lives of others for good. And I always think of those people that wins the Nobel 
trials. I want you to look at those people and you can call some of their names. Sister Teresa come to my mind uh, uh, right now. But the reason that they received that price is because they had given their life to the mission that they were involved in. And as a result, they, their name is in that hall of fame and they gave that prize. I am looking forward to the day when we would be so involved in winning the loss that people would recognize us so much that they would give us a prize for that loss. Now I understand we are not doing this for man. But what I'm saying also is that as we engage in the matter of soul winning for the love of God, that will be seen and those that run will have to recognize that yes, we are on that task of being a soul winner. So for the love of God, be a soul winner for the Lord. For the love of God, I want you to now show people the price that was paid for sin. And that price is right there in Jesus dying on the cross. That's the price he paid. That's the price that God paid for his church and for lost sinners. And Jesus died on the cross. And yes, we were not there, but as we look at the word of God, there is a clear picture. And by words, we share with them uh, Jesus on the cross and the fact that he died. And in so doing, paying the price for our sins. And you see, when people begin to understand and see that, the Spirit of God would help them to then uh, respond to God out of love for him. But understand also there is a second part of this that is also uh, death. Because the scripture tells us just now that if the wicked man does not turn from his way and he die in his sin, that is also real for us today. Because if you don't turn your life to Christ, you likewise will die in your sin. But it will not be a die and a debt to pay uh, for the deliverance of sin. It will be a debt of separation from God for all eternity. So whether it is Jesus uh, dying for our sins, or it is you dying because of rejecting Jesus Christ, the price for sin is death. So for the love of God, I am pointing that out to you this morning, and that is a great price to pay. Then number four, for the love of God, I want you to show them the gift of God. The gift of God. And it's not this beautiful watch that is in my hand or that phone that is in your hand. That gift of God is eternal life. Jesus Christ, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he is dead, yet shall he live. Eternal life is you surrendering your life to Christ and that life starts now and it goes on through all eternity with God. That is the gift that God has given to us and that gift comes through the person of Jesus Christ. So that as you receive Christ as your Savior, you have that gift of eternal life and the Word of God will tell us that no one, nothing, would be able to separate us from the love of God. So, for the love of God, I have shown you what is that gift. It is the greatest gift that you will ever receive. And if you thought the gift that you received last week from your loved one is anything, much respect to them, but it cannot compare with the gift that God has given to us. Number five, for the love of God, I'm challenging you to be a faithful watchman to God or a faithful soul winner. Notice here, the Lord called uh, Ezekiel and he said, I am sending you there and I want you to warn them. 
So God has appointed Ezekiel as that watchman. And the task that he had, he was to stand at the gate. And he must warn the people, those on the outside and those on the inside, of the word of God. And he must send a clear signal to them so that they will understand that danger is coming and that they will protect themselves from danger. As the Lord called Ezekiel, he gave him the word of God on a scroll. And he says, Ezekiel, I want you to eat this. And the scripture said he went again and he ate it. And then he said it tastes like honey. Then he said, now, I want you to go there now. What will he say to them? It is the word of God. So number one, church, as you become a faithful soul winner, we must study and understand the word of God. It is the word of God that will bring um, conviction. It is the word of God that will bring truth to the minds of people. Our words does not mean a thing. So when we stand before people, we don't tell them our words, but we give them the word of God, and we give it to them in clarity, in sound doctrine, that they will understand clearly that this is the word of God. And when we were to do that, he says the Spirit of God come alongside of him and bring the conversion or the conviction into the hearts of those that we are sharing with. So, for the love of God, be a faithful soul winner. And that means we stay with it day in and day out. It is our mission, it is our task until the Lord will call us home. But number six is that we become a sacrificial soul winner. I understand that Ezekiel here, he was called as a priest. And a priest do his function in the temple as I am doing right now. But the Lord called him away from that and said, I want you to be a prophet. And as you read the scripture, <clears throat> his calling and mission was not like Daniel in the king's palace. His mission was to go down to the ghetto and you will find the song by the rivers of Babylon. That was where Ezekiel was called to live among the camps that was there. And that was where he said that he went down there and he sat with the people. And you remember the song, how can you sing a new song in this place or something to that effect? But Ezekiel was not concerned about that. He was there giving the word of God, sacrificing his life, living a life out of his comfort zone, and therefore obeying God. And so when we call upon you to be a sacrificial servant of God, church, that's what it is is that we would give up that which is near and dear to us and we would find ourselves in the most uncomfortable place because I'm not used to this. But guess what? This is a place that God has called me and therefore I am going to do um, this work there. I'm going to forget about my comfort zone and go where God has called me to serve. So for the love of God, be a sacrificial servant of God. And my last point before my time went out is that for the love of God, live a life of righteousness unto God. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God, says the word of God. But when you were to surrender your life to Christ, the word of God tells us that God has imputed in us the righteousness of Christ. And so the life that we now live is a life that reflects the righteousness of Christ. Righteousness is one of the characteristics of God. God cannot do wrong. And now that you and I have responded to him, he then called on us that we would live 
a life of righteousness. It means, as it says in Corinthians, all things have passed away and all things become new. That I now give up, give up my worldly lifestyle and I now adapt myself to a spiritual and a righteous lifestyle unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Now understand this, God does not uh, cut righteousness to suit us, but he changed us to suit righteousness. So the righteousness of God remains as it is, cannot change, and you can't, and God will not adjust that for us. But what God does, and thank God he did that, is that he then saved my life and changed my life from one of evil unto righteousness. And I close with this. When the Lord was speaking to his disciples in Matthew, he said to them, I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds the scribes and the Pharisees, which was an external righteousness of cleansing, you cannot be in a man. Because his righteousness is an internal one that comes from the heart and that heart that he has changed. And so he knows what is there. So this morning, church, whether you are in the building with us and you are listening on the way, my challenge to you is for the love of God that you are to serve Him. So I ask you this morning, are you in love with God? Are you in love with God? Because I tell you, if you are, if we are, this that I just pointed out will be a piece of cake. Because when you love somebody, you obey them and you serve them. And I pray that this morning, because of our love for God, that we will love Him and that we will serve Him. Father, this morning we thank you for your word. And we pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will wake us up as you did Ezekiel. And Father, that we will respond to you out of love. And that there will be nothing too good or too big for us, knowing that you are in the midst and that you have sent us. And I pray, Father, that as we were to carry out this mission, that we would have the joy of seeing many people in this city, in this country, and in the world surrender their life to you because of their love for you. Pray that you would bless us now. In Jesus' name. Amen.